All right, so here's a video um, to walk you through how to create a climate diagram, or at least uh, get you most of the way there. So we are going to be getting our data from the um, NCDC, which is the National Climate Data Center. Um, so the website is ncdc.noaa.gov. So this is what that website looks like. Um, we're gonna go to data access um, and we're gonna look for land-based stations. And then um, if like kind of in the middle of this page, you click on that find a station. And then for me, unless you know exactly where you wanna look at or the name of the station, um, I think it's best to use this mapping tool. So kind of in the top um, of the screen here, there's that black banner and then there's this mapping tool you can click on. Once you, this window pops up, um, this is giving you options for different types of maps. Um, so if you click on the All Maps tab on the right, you'll get a different set of maps. And on the second row, left-hand side is the daily observational data. Click on that map. All right, so what shows up by default is what's called the GHCN data or Global Historic Climate Network data. Um, and it's, as you can see, just in the US. But for this assignment, I want you to select data from outside the US. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unclick the GHCN on the left-hand side. These are kind of the different layers you can select. And instead, let's select the WMO, which is the World Meteorological Organization. Um, and these two data sets are really closely aligned. Um, here, let me get rid of these notifications. I'm sure you don't want to see those. Okay, and I'm going to zoom out. Um, and I'm going to go, so I'm doing this partly for another assignment that you all are not involved in yet, but um, so what I'm going to do is pick a site in Mongolia. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna look at this site right here. So each dot represents a weather station um, with data. And to get information about that site, you have to, um, next to the WMO layer, there's that wrench for the tools. We're gonna open that, it's gonna pop open a new window, and we're gonna select the identity tool. That way when we click on a dot, we'll get information about that site. So sometimes it's a little sensitive about um, exactly where you click on it, um, but I just clicked on it. And then if you look over on the left-hand side, it's come up with the name of the station, um, the station ID, and then the period of the record. So how long the data has been collected. Now for this assignment, you have to do at least 30 years. So this data set is definitely at least 30 years long. So, um, so that would be good. Before we select this, we're going to click on View Station Details. And eventually we're going to get, oh no, nope, it came back. So that's going to open a new tab um, on your browser and give you a little more information about that site. The main thing we're looking for is um, under the period of record table, there's the data coverage. And this one's 92%. We want to get at least 80% coverage. So this one's 92, this is really good um, data coverage. That means 92% of the data is present and not missing, which is good. Um, a lot of sites can have a lot more missing data. And then it's hard to know how reliable that data is if a bunch of it's missing. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my cart right here. Um, and so it's going to act kind of like you're going to pay for something and checking out, but you won't have to pay for it. So I'm going to go ahead and view my items here. And so here's some um, information about the data. And so we'll have to change some things here. So first of all, we want this custom GHCN daily CSV. So that second one, we're going to click on that radio button. And then you can see by default, it's giving you just the current year of data. Um, so if you just download what the default date range is, you won't have enough data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. Um, so we have, I'm not going to go back too far. I'm just going to start at January 1st, 1990. And then 
Remember, you want to make sure you have full years of data, so I'm not going to collect any of 2020 because that year is not done yet. I'm going to go back to 2019, and I'm going to request the data all the way through December 20, 20, sorry, December 31st of 2019. So now I'll have 30 years of data. Hit apply. Um, it's just going to gives you a little more information. I guess it's the same information we already looked at. So this bottom one, we don't have to do anything with. I'm gonna hit continue. All right, so here's a few important things on this first uh, set of options. Um, by default, it's gonna give you this station name. Also request the geographic location because that's gonna give you latitude, longitude, and elevation. Include the data flags. And then something that's really important and just makes your life a lot easier is to change the units to metric. So by default, it's giving you standard. So that would be like Fahrenheit for degrees and inches for precipitation. We want metric units. And then it will give you information about the variables that are um, available. So it could be you might get to this point in your data selection and realize there's only air temperature or only precip data, in which case you'd have to go back and find another station. Um, this one has both. So I'm just going to select both of those to make sure I get it. Um, and then right here, before I go on, I just want to highlight here under this download section on the right hand side of the page, this documentation, download one of these, whether it's word format or PDF, because that's where you're going to find information about your data flags. So right here, go ahead and download one of those um, and then come back to this page or I don't think it, let's see what happens. Yeah, it's going to open a new tab. So then come back to this tab and hit continue. It's going to give a summary of what you're requesting. Um, and then it's going to ask for your email address. Um, and then you can submit the order. What's going to happen is you're going to get an email right away saying, yeah, we got your order and we're working on it. And then a little bit later, usually within the same day, um, but sometimes it can be longer, you'll get another email with a download link to actually get your data. I'm not gonna do this because I went ahead and got my data earlier. Um, so I'm just gonna close this tab right now. Um, and we're gonna um, go ahead and look at the actual data. So, got it in a folder here somewhere. <clears throat> okay, so here's what our data is going to look like. Um, I'll zoom in a bit so it's a little easier to see. Um, but I'll try to keep all the columns on the page. Okay, so you can see column A is your station name. Um, you've got latitude and longitude in column CD. You've got elevation in E. And then you have the date all in one cell. Um, and then you can see we've got our precipitation. Um, we've got temperature, the average daily temperature. We've got the maximum daily temperature. We have minimum daily temperature. And then after each of those variables, you can see you've got this attributes. So if I widen this column, we'll see that this says precip attributes. These are your data flags, all right? So you're gonna have to use these a bit later. Um, one thing, so if you look at this first one, you can see it says comma, comma, I. What that, the reason it's like that is because there's actually three data flags. The first two, they're just nothing, there's nothing to indicate for the first two data flags. And then the third data flag has some information. If you look in column J at the T average attributes, you can see it's H, S, S, comma. So here we've got two data flags available. And the middle one, which would be in between those two commas, is missing. So I'm not going to scroll down through the whole thing, but there, there are situations where you would have three data flags. So what we need to first do, which is going to make our spreadsheet a bit bigger, is so we have three variables here. Um, and so we can split this column by these commas, um, but we need some empty columns to the right of it. So um, we're going to need three columns total for all of the data flags. H can act as one of those columns, but now we need two empty columns to the right of H. So I'm going to highlight those I and J, and then I'm just going to do an insert 
um, oh, you can't see, but I'm, I'm out of the screen, but in my, when Excel is open, I have a menu at the top, so you can insert your columns that way. Um, what am I looking for? Oh, there we go, okay. Um, but there's different ways of inserting. You can go to the Insert tab here and insert those columns. <clears throat> Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click back on H where the data flags actually are. I'm gonna to go to data, the data tab, and then there's a text to columns button. We're gonna click that. And we're gonna select the delimited because these three um, data flags are separated by a comma. So we'll do delimited. The next one, you can see tab is selected. You can leave that selected, but then we need to click on the comma and then we just hit finish. And so now, remember, there was no data flags for the first two, so we've got blank, blank, and then our I shows up in the third column. So um, we can change, I'm gonna just change or add headers here. I'm just gonna say it's precip attribute two, and this is precip attribute three, okay? And then you can go ahead and do that for the temperature one. So I would pause it here, create those columns and separate um, the columns with the, the attributes for the temperatures, and then start the video again. Um, now, there's one other thing we have to do before we really get started, um, and that is actually, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and do this. Um, we're gonna do something similar to what we just did with the attributes with the date. Um, in Excel, it's a bit easier if we have a separate column for month and a separate column for year. Um, so we've got to extract month and year from this date in column F. So I'm gonna create uh, two new columns to the right of the date column. The first one I'm gonna label month and the second one year. Now to extract the month from this date cell here, um, there's a command called month. So we do equals month, I'm going to put an opening parenthesis and then just click on that date cell and hit enter. All right, so right now it looks a little weird because if you look at the date, it's January 1st, 1990. This one says January 1st, 2000. Um, that's because it's trying to force our month into a full date format. We're going to change that in just a second. But before we do, let's go ahead and do something similar in the year column. So I'm going to do equals year opening parentheses, click on that date cell, close it out, and then you can see I get a, a weird thing there too. So what I'm going to do is highlight both of these cells, go back to my home tab, and then kind of in the, I guess a little to the left of that tab, there's um, this little window that says date. That's the format of the cell. So I'm going to change that to general. And now you can see month is one for January and year is 1990. Now what I can do is highlight both of those, and in the bottom right hand corner of that highlighted area, you see that little green square. If you hover over it, your icon will change, and then you double click that, and it's gonna fill in that entire column. So if you look at the month column, which is G, you can see it's changing. It's four, five, six, and the year is staying the same, but if we scroll down to just after December, you can see it switches to January of 1991. So it's worked. We've got a year column and a month column. Now, something we really should have done right off the bat, um, but I forgot to do it, so we definitely wanna do it now, is save this as an Excel file. You probably downloaded a CSV file, and CSV files don't know how to handle formulas um, and commands like month and year. And so if you save it as a CSV, you're going to lose a lot of your work. So what you want to do is go ahead and um, I'm going to do, for me, it says save a copy. So I would save a copy, name it something. And then down here in this file format window, um, I've already saved it as an Excel. But if I hadn't, this is what would come up, something like this, where it said comma delimited and it would say CSV. That is not how we want to save it. So click on the XLSX button and make sure to save it in that format. Then, then every all of your work, including your calculations and the diagram you created in, that will all be saved. Okay, now what I'm gonna do here, um, 
a good practice when you're dealing, especially with large data sets, but data sets you've downloaded from somewhere, is to keep one sheet that's kind of like as raw of data as possible. Um, so I could have saved a first sheet with none of those columns I just created, um, but I didn't change the order of anything. I didn't do any calculations. So I'm gonna save this, or this sheet one is gonna be what I'm gonna call my raw data. Um, I'm having trouble clicking on it, I think, because of... So if you look at the very bottom left, where it says sheet one in Excel, I'm gonna double click that, and I'm just gonna call it raw. Then I'm gonna click this plus button to create a new sheet. I'm gonna go back to raw. I'm gonna copy everything. So I clicked in that upper left-hand corner to select the whole sheet. I hit, I'm on a Mac, so I hit Command C to copy. Sheet two, I'm gonna paste that data. It's gonna take a second because it's a pretty big data set. All right, there we go. All right, so what we're gonna do is we need to calculate, so for a climate diagram, we want, want the um, average monthly values of temperature and precip. And in class, we should have talked about the fact that we are gonna calculate uh, precipitation a bit differently than temperature. So you'll see that in this process. We're first gonna calculate um, the average monthly temperatures, and then we'll do precip. And for right now, what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna leave the data sorted as it is. So it's got you know January through December of 1990, and then below that is January through December of 1991, 1992, so on and so forth. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate the average temperature of each month in each year. All right, so I'm just gonna have one value for January in 1990, I'll have another value for January 1991 and 1992 and so on and so forth. So this is just the first step in getting to our final data where the final data, you just want one value for all of the Januaries. All right, you don't want it by year, but we're gonna start this way. Hopefully you'll see why here in just a minute. So what I'm gonna do, I've got the whole worksheet um, selected by the upper, upper corner button. I am going to click on the data tab. And then there should be a little subtotals button here. For me, it's kind of in the middle of my banner. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, um, the way you do this in Excel is it's gonna look for all the similar values in a row in one column, and it can average across all of those similar values. So for us, the similar values are gonna be month. And so I'm gonna say at each change in month, calculate the average, and then here, I can tell it what values I want the average of. So I want T min, T max, and T average. Right now we're not gonna do precip because we're gonna calculate that slightly differently, okay? So what Excel is gonna do essentially is it's gonna go down through column G and it's gonna say, okay, there's a one in row one and there's a one in row two. So I'm gonna average those two. And then it will say, before I do that, I'm gonna see if row three also has a one. And indeed it does. So it's gonna go all the way down until it finds where column G or the month column changes. Right before it changes, then it's gonna calculate all of those, the average of all of those rows that had a number one. And then it will calculate the average of all the rows that have a number two, all right? So it's gonna kind of work through this sheet that way. So if we hit okay, It'll take just a second and then it will calculate those subtotals. Now, after you do a subtotal, so if you look in the very left-hand corner, there's now these three little numbers. These are like different layers of the worksheet. Um, and so layer three is what we're looking at with all the kind of raw data. Layer two actually has our subtotals. And so what you can see in column G is the month. And so, in, so it's telling us now like here in row one is the average of number one. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do something. Let's go back. All right. So stop for a second. Um, sorry about this, but I guess it's it's always good to see how the wrong way to do it is. So hopefully you do it the right way. Click on subtotals again. Now we don't have to change anything here. Um, it'll just calculate over the subtotals we did. So we don't have to remove them. But what the, I forgot to do is we want the average of year 
Actually, we don't need that. I'm sorry. We did it right. Getting confused with a different assignment. Okay, we're good to go. So we've got the month, we've got the average of um, the T average, T max, and T min. Fantastic. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy and paste this data to a different worksheet. The trick is, so what we're looking at here is the subtotals. But remember we have these three different layers on the worksheet. And so if you click on layer three, you're gonna see your raw data. And if you scroll down, you'll see those subtotals inserted into this worksheet. All right, so when we click on layer two, the data, the raw data doesn't go away, it's just hidden. So if we try to copy column G, it's not gonna give us just what you see here, it's gonna give us all that raw data in between as well. So there's a little trick. Um, I'm gonna select the rows I want. So I want column G. And then for me, I'm gonna hold the command. If you're on Windows, you could do Control and click on the T average column, the T max column, and the T min column. Now, what we really wanna copy is just these rows that we can see, or the visible cells. So if you go back to the Home tab, on the right, there's a Find and Select. Click on that, and there should be a Go To Special. Click on that, and there's an option for Visible Cells Only. Click on that button there, and hit OK. Now it's only selecting those cells we can see. Now you can copy, and you can see the little marching ants show up. I'm going to create a new sheet, and then I'm going to paste. And it's going to take a second, apparently. All right, there we've got all of that, that data um, pasted in there, okay? Now I'm going to go back to sheet one. Um, remember, that was just our temperature. Now we have to do a preset, all right? So I'm going to click on the whole sheet again, so everything's highlighted. Go back to data and subtotals. Now, I still want the, the subtotals at the each change in month, but I don't want to average. I want to sum because this is going to give me how much rain came in that month. If I average, what I'm actually going to get is the average size of precip events in that month, not the amount received. All right, so that's where it's different. And then I'm going to click on the precip column. Now we don't have to select month or year here because we already have month in our in sheet two from our temperature data. Um, and if we took the sum of the months, it wouldn't make sense. It would add up all of the values in the month. And so we get like a value of 30 for January and a, a value of like 60 for February. So it's meaningless for us. Um, so don't worry about selecting the month here. All right, just take the sum of precip. So I'm gonna do that. Again, it's gonna, before it calculates precip, it's gonna get rid of the temperature um, subtotals. If I click on layer two, we're gonna see I've got the, the precip values here, okay? So I'm gonna click on that row. Again, we still have all that raw data in between, so we have to go to the Home tab, the Find and Select, Select, Go to Special, Visible Cells Only, hit OK, then Copy, back to Sheet 2, and then I'm gonna paste this into column E. Okay, so now I have the average temperatures for each month and each year, and then I have the, the total amount of precip received in each month in each year. Now remember, I didn't copy the year column because for the climate diagram, you just want you know the, the values for each month averaged across all of the years. And so that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna click this whole sheet, and now we need to sort the data. Because we wanna take the average of January across all years, we need all of the Januaries together to get those averages easily. So if we sort the data, so we'll go to, sorry, um, I'm gonna to go to the data tab. There should be a sort button. It's gonna open this window and I wanna sort by month. So I'm gonna do that. Now you can see if you look at column A, I've got a bunch of rows that say one average. 
So each one of these represents the average of January of a different year. This first one was 1990, 91, 92, all the way through 2019. All right. And we don't need the year because what we're going to do is we're in, in Excel, we're going to say at each change in the month column, give me the average. All right. Remember, we couldn't do this as the first step because pre for precip, you have to first sum up the total, then we can take the average. And so I think it's we, we have to do it in two steps just because temperature and precip are done a little differently. But let's go ahead and calculate our subtotal. So I'm already on the data tab. I'm going to click on our subtotal icon again. I'm, again, it's going to be at each change in month, but we're going to take the average. We're going to take the average of precip, t min, t max, and t average. I'm going to hit OK. Oh, wait, we needed to do one other thing. No, we're, we're OK. All right. So let's, well, let's copy and paste this to a new sheet and then talk about what we have. So I'm just going to highlight everything here. Go back to the Home tab. Find and select. Go to Special. Visible cells only. OK. Make sure to hit copy, create a new sheet, and then I'll paste my data. So it, you can see it sorts it um, alphabetically, essentially. So you have one, and then every other um, value that starts with a one gets put next. And that's OK. We can sort this in, in just a minute. The thing I want to point out is you've got these grand averages at the bottom. Whenever you do a subtotal, it'll give you the values you ask for, and then it also gives you this grand average. Um, and for us, it's not really that useful. So I'm just going to delete these last two rows. So I'll um, highlight 14 and 15. I'm going to go up to my edit menu and just hit delete and get rid of those. All right. And the reason that the months didn't get sorted right is because it's text. Excel, you know, recognizes this column as text and not numbers. So I'm just going to go through and enter the actual numbers of each month. Once I get down here, I can just go like that. Um, we'll call it month two. So what I'm going to do now is just sort this data by that month two column. And then that's our one through 12. OK, now a couple things we have to do here. Um, this is essentially the data or Column C and column F are what you're gonna what you're going to plot in the climate diagram. All right, so those are gonna be your lines in the climate diagram. But then you also need things like MAT, MAP, um, maximum temperature of the warmest month, and minimum temperature of the coldest month. So let's just do those real quick. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna call these the averages. Um, I'll, we'll call these the mean annuals. How about that? we need mean annual temperature so for that we're going to type um, equals and then average is the name of the function I'll put an opening parentheses select all of those values do a closing parentheses and hit enter that is your mean annual temperature for this site so on average um, the temperature is two point about six degrees Celsius at this site so that's a cold site um, now we can just copy this over. Well, I'll just enter it here. Over by the precip, we're going to do the same thing. Equals, um, but instead of average, we're going to do sum. Because if we did average, it would tell us on average how much precip is received each month. But we want to know on average how much precip is received in the entire year. So we're going to sum this instead, add all of these up, do a closing parentheses, and there's our sum. So not very much precip, um, less than 100 millimeters of precip. So a very, very dry site, very, very cold site. Um, and that's very typical of the Mongolian plateau. And it's not always this dry, but um, it is a pretty dry system. OK, so now you need the, the maximum temperature of the warmest month. So all you do is you go through here. Um, in your Tmax column, find your warmest month, which is month seven, and that value right there is the average, you know, maximum temperature of the warmest month. And then we do the same thing, but for the coldest month. So in the T min column, we find our coldest month, which is January, 
and this is our average minimum temperature of our coldest month. All right. So those are values you're going to put on your climate diagram as well. Um, two, I'm just going to get you started on creating your climate diagram. Um, so if you go to the insert tab, <clears throat> we're going to insert a chart um, kind of in the middle of the tab. And what I want to select is this one here that just has the two axes and a bunch of dots. All right. Um, and then I am going to select this one that kind of looks like the lines are going every which way. Um, we'll use those. Uh, so I'm going to click on that one. Oh, because I have a bunch of data selected, it's tried to figure out how I want everything plotted. Um, but we're going to we're going to undo that. Um, so for me, if I have this uh, chart selected and I do control click, um, it'll give me this select data option. For some of you in Windows, oops, let me move this for a second. You'll have a little toolbar at the right hand side and you can click on that select data. Um, you might try control clicking or right clicking if you're on Windows to select data. You can also see the tab up here. Um, it's kind of shaded out right now, but there's a select data option. So lots of different ways to select your data. Um, but essentially what I'm going to do is get rid of all of this data and we'll start from scratch. All right. Um, we, we could have saved some of that, but we'll just do it from, from the beginning. So by default, there's no data. I'm going to add a data series and I can name this series precipitation. All right. And then my X values for precipitation. If you click this little box or arrow that's in the side, then it's going to be waiting for you to highlight the values of your X column. So month two is going to be the X to enter. And then my Y value for precip is going to be all of these values here. All right. Now I need to add another series and this is going to be temperature. So the X values, I'm going to have to select that month two column again. So it's the same X values. And then the Y values are my T average. This is what I'm going to plot. All right, hit OK. And it updates it so that I've got just precipitation and temperature. Um, we do want to, we, precip is blue, which is what we want. Temperature is going to be red, if you remember. So there's different ways of doing that. Um, so if I change colors, let's see. This is a slightly new version of Excel for me. So for me, I'm going to do format data series and I should, yeah, I should get a window over here with different options. If I click on the line option, um, you can see because I have the temperature line selected on my chart, that's the information it pulls up. It's currently orange. I'm just going to change that to the bright red. I'm going to close that little window. Um, so it, it changes that. Oh, the other thing, the one thing it did, look at, it, it changed the lines to red. Let's zoom in, but not the symbols. So let's go back. I'm going to select that, the temperature line again. I'm going to do control format data series. Um, click back on the paint bucket. Um, and then you see the line is selected. Now I'm going to select marker and I'm going to change that color to red as well. Now the whole thing should be red. Oh gosh, it's just doing the line. All right. <laughs> Let's go back. I forgot all of these options are possible. Um, so here I'm just doing, you can see the border is selected. I'd have to go to fill to change the, the color. All right. The other thing we could do is just get rid of markers altogether and it would look a little more like a climate diagram. So I don't care which way you do it. It's totally fine to leave the symbols there. Just so you can see, if I go to marker options and select none, it's just going to get rid of the markers and leave the line. All right. So I'll do that one. So it looks a little more like our kind of official climate diagram. Marker, marker options, none. Okay, there we go. All right, so a couple things here. You're going to need to put in access labels. And so 
if you select your chart and go to chart design tab you can add chart elements so you can see there's axis titles um, so you're going to have primary horizontal primary vertical um, you can do a chart title above the chart that's where you're going to put all of your information like location latitude longitude map mat all of that kind of stuff is going to go in there um, so I'll let you do those things. Before you finish though, there's two things you need to do. Right now, our precip line, the blue one, and the red line are both on the left-hand axis. And remember in class, we talked about how a climate diagram, the data on the left is for temperature and the one on the right is for precip. So we've got to change that. So the way to do that is you're going to highlight your precip data or that precip line and you're going to format that data series. Um, so I'm going to go control click format data series. Um, and you can see like if you select if the bars aren't selected, um, you'll want to select those bars. And then there's this option for a secondary axis that's going to put the data or the kind of numbers for the blue line or precip line on the right hand side. So I'm going to click that hit OK. And you can see now we have this um, right hand axis these numbers tell you the values of the blue line and the values on the left tell you the the what the values of the red line are okay last thing before i finish the the video is you can see our x-axis is running like through the middle of our data and this won't always be the case if all of your temperature values are above zero this won't happen but if you have some months below zero this is going to happen because by default um, Excel puts your x-axis at zero and it's the zero on the left hand axis so the way to change this is you click on the one of the values of the y-axis and it will kind of highlight that y-axis um, and then you can do again like a control or a right click and format the axis get another line at the right and what we want is Part way down, so again, the tab with the bars are selected um, and the axis options are selected, not the text options. If I go down, there's this horizontal axis crosses. So this is where it's automatic and it automatically has it cross at zero. What would be much better and make more sense is if this X axis crossed at the very bottom, so at minus 20. So what we can do is we can tell it at the add a certain axis value. So if I put in minus 20 here and then close that window, you can see it moved the X axis and those numbers down to the very bottom of the graph. All right, so make sure you do that before you finalize your graph. Here, you're, you're almost done. You just have to add a title for your X axis, a title for your left hand Y, your right hand Y, and then add all that information for your chart title and you should be good to go.